Over the past 15 years, I've been a part of the installation of over 3,000 modules. I've certainly learned a lot, and I would like to share some of those findings with you. My name is Robert Schmalbeck. I am the Vice President of Construction at the Volumetric Building Companies. So the largest project I've worked on at VBC has been 510 North Broad Street here in Philadelphia. It was roughly 440 residential units, 250,000 square feet of modules, and there was actually 365 modules involved in that project, and it took us roughly five months to install it. It was one of the neatest things to be a part of, just it was in the center of Philadelphia that we used uh, different equipment than we had used before. That uh, was just really uh, a great project to be a part of and something uh, that uh, I'm able to drive by every day. Over the past 25 years, in, since I've been involved in construction, the one thing that has surprised me the most has been how much I've learned. Whether it was from subcontractors, coworkers, other general contractors, it's been a constant educational process and what, what I personally really enjoy is sharing that knowledge with others. That's why we often encourage and ask people to come to our sites to spend time with us, to touch our product, to feel it, because that truly is where we are and what we can share with them. First is scope gap. Our focus there is to make sure that obviously there's nothing that gets missed. Uh, there's many tasks that might not be normal to a conventional project, that we need to educate the general contractor and the developer on. Our sequence is a little different, but when it comes to creating scopes, it's generally very similar to what you have in the conventional world. The key is doing it much earlier. So before we bring on any of the trades, we have to have a fully complete scope that they're gonna understand. For example, the plumber's going to need to know exactly how many fixtures he needs to install versus in a conventional building, he knows he needs to install every fixture. In regards to the level of detail that we need to get to, this is often where a project is won or lost. Those scope gaps end up being change orders to the client in the end. So any items that, are, that aren't captured in the original budgets, whether it's from the modular side or the on-site side for the general contractor, they ultimately end up being paying for the owner. So one of the beauties of the volumetric building company is our construction arm and the knowledge that we have gained over the years and the experience that we're able to share now with developers and general contractors really eliminates that potential change order, which is, is the conversation nobody wants to have with the owner and something we're going to try to avoid at all costs. Item number two is design and the upfront coordination. In regards to modular design, one of the, the thoughts or the ideas is you're limited. And what we found out on a lot of our projects is you're really not. We can do angles, we can do odd shapes, we can really create a very unique building. And that's one of the items that many of our clients come to us and they're really surprised when we offer that to them. What's different in off-site construction versus the conventional world is 95% of our design happens up front before anything happens. If this is done correctly, you can have a very successful project. That goes from everything from coordination of items that are gonna travel vertically through a building like plumbing stacks or electrical items. Also, just ties together to make sure that the production line will run smoothly because they have all of their information up front. Item number three, water intrusion. This is probably our favorite topic to discuss here at Volumetric Building Companies in terms of the field team. It is our focus, obviously, since our modules are 95% complete coming out of the factory, drywall installed, painted, cabinetry, we need to keep these units dry from the elements. They've lived in a factory where they've had no exposure, and now this will be the first time that they're out in the elements. So whether we're installing or after installation of the modules, our focus is keeping the building dry. One of the best stories of that is simply came from someone who got sick of pushing water off the roof with a broom. So after pushing water off the roof and trying to manage that for years, he came up and said, why don't we connect our plumbing vents through the building as soon as we set the modules and then we have temp drains everywhere. Since then we've done it and our buildings have continue to stay dry. It saved us money because before we had to pay to do temp drains and pay to do this, now we're just paying the plumber to connect what he already has to do. Item number four, logistics. So before a project can even become a modular project, we need to go out and look at the site. We need to do a feasibility study. Can I 
put a crane in a location where I can install the modules? Can I physically get the modules from the factory to this site? So we start off with a feasibility study and work through that. Assuming everything is good there, then we start figuring out a logistical plan. The production order will be based off the installation sequence. So logistics, once again, besides being up front to make sure we can physically install the modules, is also involved in the very beginning for a production schedule to make sure the way the manufacturing is going to be built will follow how we're going to install the building. In terms of other issues or other items with logistics, just simply navigating urban environments. Most of our projects are in cities. So we are often working with the local municipalities and figuring out how to get modules in and out of their cities. Once an installation date has been set, the team will gather and will work on our installation sequence. One thing about the logistical team is the flexibility that they have. Our dates are constantly changing due to weather, due to traffic, due to the president coming through and shutting down roads. We really don't always know exactly what is going to happen, so that flexibility of the team allows us to get through projects as easily and painless as possible. The next th topic is how to select a general contractor. Obviously, the general contractor is going to be selling themselves and explaining, obviously, their history, what they can do, and how they can make this project successful. The biggest key is just making sure we find someone who wants to learn and wants to be a part of something. Uh, unfortunately, some GCs see off-site construction as a competitor instead of a partner. And that's what we need to find are GCs that want to grow with us and be partners with us. When a developer is picking a GC, they, they'll have, certainly have plenty of meetings, but I truly believe they need to either go to a factory or come to a modular site and really discuss the product, discuss how the process works, and then get their buy-in to make sure they're the correct GC for that developer. One of the biggest advantages of working with volumetric building companies is just the experience that we have in the knowledge share. The knowledge share from the designers through production, through to the field, and then the reversal of that information flowing backwards. The fields every day sends reports back to both design and to manufacturing, which are vital. We're able to not only improve things for the field, but we're also able to find ways to improve manufacturing as well. In case there's something maybe they're doing thinking that they're trying to help the field, we can help eliminate certain tasks like that. When choosing VBC, the experience that we have is second to none. We have experienced almost everything you can in both wood and steel modules around the world, and there's not another company that can do that. Thanks for watching, and if you ever want to geek out about modular, leave your comments below. Thanks.